I think there's just people out there they don't really like me very much. Why? But uh, I was for whatever you know. It's you know snorkel. Sorry, snorkel. Hey, what's going on, fight fans? Welcome to the YouTube channel, and hope you're doing well. Today we're taking a look at one of the UFC's most beloved superstars and Stockton's finest, Nick Diaz. Nick along with his brother Nate have always been a source of great entertainment for MMA fans for their crazy fights and also their carefree and fearless way of living. Not to mention both are unintentionally funny. But it was Nick who started the Diaz craze amongst fans due to his exploits in the UFC and prior to it. But why is Nick so loved by the UFC fans and fighters? How does he roll in his everyday life? And why did fans never miss a Nick Diaz fight? All of this will be revealed in our countdown today. Let's jump into it. Number eight. Nick Diaz started his MMA career in 2001, where he worked his trade in several fight promotions before signing for the IFC. He had a successful spell in the IFC, where he became the IFC welterweight champion in just his second match and defended the crown several times. Following his exploits in the IFC, the UFC decided to sign Nick in 2003, where he made his debut against former IFC rival, Jeremy Jackson, with whom he had fought on several occasions in the IFC. They would meet for the third time with Diaz emerging victorious in his first fight by submitting him in round three. I wanna thank uh, all, my, all my buddies, David Terrell, my little brother Nathan, everybody from Stockton, Steve Heath, and uh, you know, worked hard. No, I'm really grateful that I won. Later, he faced one of his best welterweights at that time, Robbie Lawler, and made a huge impression on fans by taunting and rocking Lawler several times during the fight, ultimately knocking him out in the second round. Later on, he hit a roadblock as he suffered a split decision defeat against Caro Parisian and also a loss to Diego Sanchez. Nick was then pitted against Joe Riggs in UFC 57, where both men put on a slugfest for fans. The fight was very back and forth as both men went after each other with all their effort, but ultimately the judges ruled in Riggs' favor, earning him a decision win. But you wouldn't believe what happened next, as the hatchet wasn't buried inside the octagon. The matter escalated outside of it, where both the fighters had a scuffle in a hospital ER room where they were both taken after the fight. It turned out to be comical to say the least. Nick was one of those fighters who was very shy and had trouble articulating himself freely during interviews. But it was inside the octagon where Nick was at his expressive best, fighting with confidence and most memorably, his unique style of taunting his opponents during the fight. But he wasn't without his fair share of drama and antics, which is what made Nick Diaz such a loved figure amongst his fans. Those traits made him a funny character as well. After these losses, Diaz would leave the UFC and would then compete in other fight promotions. Many believed that Diaz would not return to the UFC ever again, but President Dana White knew that it wouldn't be long until Diaz returned. Until then, Diaz competed in Strikeforce for a while, where he became the Strikeforce welterweight champion by defeating Zaramkis via first round knockout. His legs are gone, they're absolutely wild. Nick had several successful title defenses in Strike Force before the UFC once again approached him for a super fight with welterweight legend GSP in 2011. Diaz agreed to the fight with George, expressing his desire on multiple occasions to fight Diaz, as he believed he was one of the best welterweights at the time. So the super fight was all set, with fans hyped up for the fight to take place as well as for a return of Nick. But things hit a snag when Nick failed to appear for several promotion events in support of the fight. He was later reprimanded by the UFC as they removed him from that fight. The UFC then offered Nick a fight against former welterweight and lightweight champ BJ Penn, to which he agreed. Nick was the underdog heading into the fight, with Penn dominating the first round of that fight, but as always, Nick was known for his toughness and exemplary boxing, and he brought all that to the fore in the second and third round of the fight, with Penn having no answer to the barrage of punches thrown at him. He won the match by unanimous decision. After watching Nick's impressive display, the UFC made no hesitation in booking an interim title fight between Condit and Diaz at UFC 143. 
The fight was a really close affair with both fighters doing more than enough to take the win. They went the distance, with many believing Diaz had the upper hand having been on the front foot in the initial rounds. But to everyone's surprise, the judges ruled the decision in favor of Condit, leaving Diaz frustrated. An angry and distraught Nick would then announce at the post-match press conference that he was done with MMA, as he couldn't understand the judge's way of scoring fights. Hey, Carlos is a great guy. I'm happy for him and his family. I think I'm done with this MMA. It's been great out here. I've had a good career. Uh, you guys pay me way too much, but I don't think I'm gonna get enough to keep going in this. And uh, it's been a good time. You know, Caesar Grace is jiu-jitsu. Uh, good job, Carlos, you're the man, bro. But turned out it was the heat of the moment that had got the better of Nick due to which he had said those words, and the UFC convinced him to return, this time for a long-awaited title fight against GSP. The pre-match trade-off between both the fighters lived up to its billing as Nick went off at George like a house on fire, claiming that George was scared to fight him and had avoided him on several occasions to fight and also in person. He also had accused George of being on steroids and also the UFC for selling wolf tickets. <laughs> Hold on, let me check my dictionary. Wolf, Wolf Spain, nah, I don't, I don't see any tickets. No wolves with no tickets. Anyway, GSP, known for his calm and cool personality, was remarkably frustrated by Nick's accusations, with many fans believing Nick had rattled the great GSP before the match, but that was just Nick's way of taunting his opponents. The fight took place in a packed Bell Center arena in Montreal. Nick was unable to deal with George's pressure and striking as he was also taken down several times in the fight. George had a lot of moments where he could have finished the fight, but Nick's durability came through in those moments. Nick had his flashes, but GSP was the much better fighter throughout the fight. Nick lost the fight by majority decision and left the UFC again, and many felt this time for good. Dana believed that this was just a hiatus and backed himself to get Nick back fighting in the octagon. In 2015, he made his second return to the UFC against middleweight legend Anderson Silva. At this time, it was felt that Diaz had become one of those prize fighters who would only compete in major fights, and rightly so, as he had become one of the most popular fighters in the UFC, where fans would never miss his fights because of his entertainment value he provided. His fight with Silva is best remembered for his famous middle of the octagon sleep pose, which showed that Diaz still had that in the ring mojo that he was famous for, and he lost that fight to Silva via decision and had signed a three-fight contract with the UFC until controversy struck. Nick was popped for a marijuana metabolite that was found after a test and was banned for five years from competing in MMA and was slapped with a $165,000 fine. This was extremely harsh considering fighters who had been popped for steroids got off with significantly shorter bans and lesser fines. UFC champions such as Ronda Rousey and Daniel Cormier came in support of Diaz, claiming the ruling to be harsh and unfair. Amidst such criticism, the NSAC reduced its sentence to 18 months and a lesser fine. After serving his ban, Nick also had to deal with some off-field issues. He was cleared to compete again in MMA in 2018, but since then has not made his return, with many believing that was the end of Nick Diaz's UFC career. But at the start of this year, the UFC made the announcement of Diaz's return to the octagon against Robbie Lawler at UFC 266, sending fans into frenzy. Well, after having been out of the game for so long, there might be question marks over his conditioning and strength. But one thing's for sure, the noise is going to hit the roof when Diaz appears inside the octagon to make his return. Number 7 Nick, similar to Nate, was seen as the fan favorite of the UFC. And with that, he had bargaining power with the UFC when it came to being paid. His last fight against Anderson Silva in 2015 saw him earn $400,000, which at the time was a significant payout. His career earnings to date have been $1.6 million, which also shows had he not been out of action for so many years due to his ban, currently he would be amongst the top earners of the UFC. But come UFC 266, it's redemption time for Diaz to make up for lost time and also entertain the fans with his famous in-ring swagger. Number six. The Diaz brothers recently co-founded a company by the name of Game Up Nutrition, a firm which provides CBD products. These products are organically fresh and made of industrial hemp. The catalog of products includes CBD oil, CBD pre-rolls, and many more. Talking about endorsements, you won't find a better advocate of cannabis than the Diaz brothers. 
Nick has also appeared in a commercial for Futurola, which is a firm based in Amsterdam and is known for its production of rolling papers and state-of-the-art rolling accessories manufacturing. In that commercial, Nick was seen smoking weed and the way that Nick has acted adds a hilarious touch to the commercial. Nick has also tried his hand at being a fight promoter by opening his own fight promotion company dubbed War MMA, which didn't quite take off. The promotion hosted a 12 fight event, which was the only single event of the promotion. Number five. We thought we would have to separate a segment for this as it is one of the business ventures that is very close to Nick's heart. I am sure Nick doesn't see it as a business venture though, but the Nick Diaz Academy in California is a martial arts gym where Nick, Nate, and their group of friends train for the fight camps and do regular workouts. The gym's availability is not only limited to Nick's acquaintances, but also for those who want to learn the art of the famed Gracie Jiu Jitsu, wrestling and boxing. During the days when he was not competing in the UFC, he used to spend time in the gym training young kids and adults along with his coaches Cesar Gracie. He could have gone back to the UFC after serving his band, but he chose to dedicate himself in helping his brother Nate during his fight camps and also train the members and young kids in the gym. Apart from being funny, the Diaz brothers are known to be the people's fighters, which is why they are so well supported by their fans. I mean, who wouldn't be fans of such a crazy duo who bring entertainment and joy to the fans every time, whether it's on the mic or on the octagon? Number four. Okay, so you would be surprised to hear this. Nick and his brother Nate are both vegans. 80% of their diet largely consists of fresh vegetarian food with some room for eggs. The reason for that being, Nick is not a huge fan of doing hardcore workouts and then taking protein supplements and taking a day off. He says that a vegan diet allows him to train continuously for three days, which gives him more energy and helps him stay healthy during fight camps. I don't do dairy products or anything like that, and I think that, um, I think it helps out a lot uh, when it comes to training all week long. I spend a lot more time in the gym, on the mat, training. He also encouraged Nate to adopt the vegan lifestyle. Talking about his bond with his brother Nate, let's get into the next segment. But before that, a fun fact. Both Nick and Nate are legal endorsers of cannabis in their hometown in California. Nick has appeared in several podcasts where he is seen smoking weed and also stating that he usually starts his day with a blunt. To know what Nick and Nate are like together, keep watching. Nick has been misunderstood a lot throughout his career for his rather unpredictable nature, but one person who believes in him the most is his younger brother Nate. Both of them are always together during fight camps and also accompany each other in their corners during fights. Nate looks up to Nick a lot. In an interview with the UFC, Nate had revealed that Nick is the leader in his life and he wouldn't know where he would be had Nick not been with him as a guide at a young age. He says that Nick was a huge influence on him, helping create a lifestyle for himself. Nate says that, I didn't want to get beat up in front of everybody, so what I did was, I'm going to follow the leader. If this guy doesn't eat meat, I'm not going to eat meat. If he's going to do five mile run, I'm going to do the same. In other words, Nick became the guy in Nate's life going forward. The Diaz brothers are the most famous siblings in the history of MMA. They may be known for their crazy fights, but also for their toughness. Another thing in common between the brothers is their devil may care attitude which most of the time comes across as funny to fans and other fighters. The main reason Nick got into fighting was so that he can earn enough to keep his brother Nate away from it. But it was destiny that we got to see both become the most famed and loved brothers MMA has ever seen. And I got the Nick Diaz army with me, we're here to take, take mother out. Number two. Nick Diaz, like other famous fighters, lives life to the fullest, as he has been spotted by the paparazzi at clubs and parties with his friends and girlfriends. Nick is always at his confident best when surrounded with his homies. Diaz owns multiple cars, such as a Chevrolet Tahoe SUV, which ranges fifty dollars to $70,000, a Range Rover SUV, which costs roughly $89,000, as well as a Tesla SUV with a sticker price of $85,000. He is often seen riding around the streets of Stockton in his Chevy. You wouldn't believe this, but Nick lives in a very simple home as compared to other fighters. He just doesn't believe in living a flashy lifestyle. Number one. You would be very surprised to hear this, but Nick leads a very active lifestyle as he is involved in several activities throughout the day. His extracurricular activities involve swimming, competing in triathlons, as well as racing marathons. He has been living this lifestyle right from his days in the UFC, and likewise, his brother Nate has also followed his routine. So finally, after looking at Nick's whole career, his best moments, his way of living, his endorsements and business ventures, his net worth stands at a cool $6 million. 
With Nick making his long-awaited return against Robbie Lawler in UFC 266, expect that number to go up, especially if we see Nick competing regularly in the future. All right, we have come to the end of our video today, but before leaving, we would like to know, is Nick Diaz the most misunderstood fighter in the game? What do you like about Nick's lifestyle the most? And what do you make of his bond with his brother Nate? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.